Structured authoring may be an obscure term, but it means a great deal to anyone working in technical documentation. When creating documents for print, most people use unstructured authoring tools like Adobe InDesign, but there are also structured authoring tools such as Adobe FrameMaker or Fonto. The structured and unstructured worlds often collide in strange ways. Structured authoring has a deep and rich history. It started with SGML, a markup language invented by Charles Goldfarb at IBM, that started to enjoy widespread usage in the 1980s. In the 1990s, SGML was streamlined into XML. XML lets you markup documents by wrapping text with tags that indicate the text's semantics. This lets you separate content from presentation. In this very simple example, knowing that one piece of text is a first name and another is the last name will let you output Goldfarb Charles or Charles Goldfarb as needed or put all the first names in blue or anything you can imagine when it comes to rendering the output. Typically, the workflow for rendering print output follows this general pattern. A marked up semantic XML file is processed by a style sheet or template to produce a rendition. This can happen entirely inside of a proprietary application such as FrameMaker, or when using tools based on XML standards, such as XSLT and XSLFO. The power of this general approach is that you can have many different outputs driven by a single source XML. Again, the XML is marked up based on what the information means and is agnostic as to how it is presented. IBM didn't stop with SGML and XML. When it comes to technical documentation, publishing isn't just a matter of changing the colors, styles, and output formats. It is also about reusing document components. When SGML was introduced, people did this in different ways. After XML became a standard in 1998, thought leaders at IBM decided it was important to codify how XML components would be reused. Darwin Information Typing Architecture, or DITA, offered a perfect solution for those building technical documentation. This type of documentation is no longer delivered in 1,200-page paper books, but is most useful when available in web formats, allowing individual topics to be accessed randomly. When presented in a static output such as PDF, the sequence and hierarchy of topics may vary for specific output requirements. Such topic-based authoring is a best practice in technical documentation, and DITA is wildly popular in that world as it codifies the process for managing document components or topics and publishing in the many output types required for technical documentation. At the other extreme, a designer in a marketing department can go an entire career without ever knowing XML or DITA. These days, Adobe InDesign is the tool of choice for designing print documents. One could create the same document using FrameMaker or InDesign, but Frame would lend itself to managing structure without amazing graphic rendition, while InDesign provides fantastic graphics and typography but does little to help author or publish a complex structured document. Organizations face a challenge in deciding on the best approach to authoring, whether to take a structured or an unstructured approach. There are document types that serve either purpose. A textbook, for example, may benefit from the component reuse offered by XML, while other books may demand visual expression that is better achieved with a tool like InDesign. Some wonder, as Adobe owns both Frame, a major player in structured authoring, and InDesign, almost a monopoly in unstructured page layout for print, whether Adobe could have merged the two products. From what I know, it's very unlikely that this will ever happen. It will probably take some time, but web-based authoring tools, such as Canva, Fonto, and Silicon Designer, are built with a more flexible type of code than were InDesign or Frame. It is possible that, in the future, a web-based document editor will attain the best of both worlds one in which structured and unstructured authoring coexist harmoniously in the same authoring layout tool. Only time will tell.